on a Friday evening, but because today on the show we've been talking about routine, we thought we'd throw it all up into the air and just forget all of that. Shane Hampshire is with us. Hello, how are you, sir? I'm great, thank you. Speaking of throwing your routine up in the air, that, that's kind of my, that's the way I like to lead my life, to yeah, be honest. That's, yes. that's true, because you, you, you will probably not know from one month to the next way you might be. You'll have mm-hmm. a, a diary as a, as a, a performer, yeah. but uh, what will go into that diary, who knows? So routine is, yeah. It's always changing, yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, the way my kind of day is structured is kind of backwards as well to be honest but we'll talk a bit about yeah we'll do that, that. we'll do that uh, well, let's uh, give a catch up uh, for you and I because we haven't seen each other we think for a fair number of years we think it must be I think personally I think it's actually more than five years I think it's a long time it's too long isn't it Dom isn't it <laughs> it's quite a long time yeah five years a lot's changed uh, I can't wait to tell you all about it. Is this the place to do it? I think this is the conversation. We should do it now. Wonderful. Um, when you first started out, because uh, you'd had a you'd had a really interest in musical theatre and and yeah. uh, and trained and, and did all of that. So, yeah. Um, but but there was a, a moment where everything changed for you, and it was a an album by Robbie Williams. Absolutely, yeah. That was a number of years uh, before I'd even really started thinking about musical theatre. It was um, I was thirteen when his album came out. It was two thousand and one. Swing when you're winning. Yeah, which is sixteen years ago. It's a long time. It's a, yeah. As long as I've been here at BBC Radio Kent. It, really? Yeah. Oh well, there you go. Yeah. So is, there's a couple of things that um, inspired me really to to get into. Um, singing for a, a career mm. and that was uh, obviously swing when you're winning and you come in here <laughs> shane hampshire is with us on the show now this kind of patter he does he does this when he's out at places like the ronnie scott's club and everything he he, he you you have to have that because when you're singing the audience expects an all you know they want to show shane yeah. don't they? they want all of that and they you, do. You, you've had to teach yourself that because we, we're talking a lot this week about confidence and yeah. you've had to learn that yourself haven't you because as a singer you got it but the, the, you had to learn over the years to to have that confidence since you first started professionally well yeah thank you very much it was it's they want to know that you are kind of in charge you know they want to be entertained and they want to know they're in safe hands mm. uh, that's something you learn along the way um I guess I started out in pubs and clubs in Kent, you know, um, uh, how many, 12 years ago. And um, that's a real learning curve. You learn, you, you learn a lot doing those sort of venues. Um, and you learn how to deal with certain types of audience, mm. uh, groups, individuals. Um, and then, you know, by the time you get to a place like Ronnie Scott's, you know, 10 years later or so, um, you just picked up all these little tricks, you know, and you've got to keep it going, keep it fresh, keep it... Um, uh, you know, you can't do that. Basically, you can't. You can't just stay silent for for very long because they just think, oh, um, this isn't going very well, is it? But you know what? That's why. That's why I think is amazing about if you're a performer that that you, you you get all these tools that you just have to learn because I'm I'm sure like you're you're, you're sort of suggesting you know you, there's a kind of there's going to be a moment where you can have a bad night where maybe you've got all your performance there and everything's great, but you've got some heckler who, who, who's just coming. It's like all the comedians have to have. Yeah. Now, they can turn that into a joke. You can't be sitting there every night. So you can, you can sing at them, Shane. Yeah. You can sing at them and hope that they go, oh, OK, I'm with you now. Yeah. But it's, it's, quite, it's, quite a, it's quite a skill to do that. But, but you, you definitely seem to be doing it in, in big ways. And uh, when I've seen video footage of you at these big, massive venues uh, like uh, Ronnie Scott's and all the rest, you know, they don't just let anyone in. I mean, you've worked hard for it. So, you know, congratulations for that. Because Thank you. Because when we first started out talking about your work, I remember uh, your dad was your manager. And, yeah. And, uh, and Dad Graham was um, sending me emails saying, oh, you know, you've got to play this on the show, you've got to do that. Yeah, he's um, very familiar to you nowadays, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you know, sends messages on Facebook and all the rest. And, um, but that, but that, that, that must have been quite a hard thing uh, because the relationship between, I guess, family working in the music business, it's, yeah. it, it can have its sort of double edge to it. Yes, you've got familiarity, you've got confidence, you know the person. On yeah. the other side, it can be quite a difficult time. That's right, and they're, they're, they can be quite biased as well. That's the thing. Um, you've yeah, got, yeah, good you've point. got yeah. kind of uh, it's a it's a case of not believing the press sort of thing. You know, your your own press. It's um, it, the, back then it was very easy for me to sit back and rest on my laurels and just let my dad get on with it all, and he did, and he did a great job for me. He got me to um, <clears throat> a, a very high up point really he got me doing theatre shows and really um, the reason why I've got a gig at Ronnie Scott's you know a couple of times a year is uh, because we did a show at the Orchard in Dartford and um, on the baritone saxophone was Pete Long the um, 
<clears throat> the uh, Ronnie Scott's j uh, jazz band um, leader. Wow. Um, and in turn, he started booking me for his band, and I got in touch with the venue, and they said, uh, yeah, uh, here's a date. So that's why I started gigging at, at the, the likes of Ronnie Scott's was because of my dad. In a way, I guess, uh, when, when that decision was made, you know, that, that actually you'd go it alone uh, and dad became dad again. Yeah. Uh, in a way, for both of you, that, that must have been quite a release. Yeah, we're, we're very similar. That's the thing. Our, our senses of humours are very similar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he wouldn't say something like that, though. But, uh, yeah, we just knew um, how to annoy each other, you know. So um, I think nowadays our relationship is, is so... Um, so much better you know we, we we don't tend to i mean he's very he's still very much involved mm. and um listening now and he uh you know as you say he he gets in touch with the with you guys very mm. often as well but your dad and mum both very supportive of what you do yeah my mum really she uh she she helped me out with my college for, you know performing arts college and um she threw a load of money into that and uh, uh yeah as far as i'm aware they're the best parents in the world now, just before Christmas, there was this um, music that came out. We talked about it on the show. We played the music and we really were getting behind it because we wanted it to, to do really well, which it did. The Dartford and Gravesham NHS Trust Choir and Shane Hampshire by your side. It was a great song. You arranged it. You were part of getting it, that all sorted. What was that like to be involved in? And why did you get involved? Oh, it was such a wonderful project to be involved in. Um, and the song um, was co-written by myself and uh, a lady called Chloe Dupre. Um, it, was, it was a song we were very proud of. And actually, um, you may know this actually, but my stepmom uh, is in is in the NHS, and she uh, she happens to be the choir master for the Dartford and Gravesham NHS Trust mm. Choir. Um, so I mean, it sort of makes sense, doesn't it? As soon as you put all of those little um, those little facts together, then something's going to come out of it. Did right? you enjoy it though, Shane? Because I guess it was something different for you because you you spend your life being you know Shane Hampshire. The show, yeah. the performance, the venue, the audience who know you very well. To be doing something slightly different, to be part of that kind of production of it all and thinking yeah. about, how, OK, you know, we know that the NHS is very much in focus. It was at Christmas time, the year before, the number one, all the rest of it Absolutely. For, for the NHS. So was that really important to you to get involved in, and back them seeing what your stepmom had been doing in her life? It was, yeah, because, I mean, the last couple of years I've done the odd Christmas concert with them and I, and I know how hard even just the choir work you know, let alone what they're doing during the daytime. Because that, that, that got me, I have to say, before Christmas, I was like, OK, so, you, so you're spending all of this time after work, and we get people need that relaxation, and they were saying, no, but we love it because we <laughs> get together. But there are also people who, who had suffered greatly within the choir themselves and, yeah. and, and, you know, were going through difficult times, cancer and the rest, you know, and it was a real sense of everyone getting together and saying, look, we are, we're supporting each other. And they said that their relationships got better That's true. as a result of being part of that choir that they did during the week exactly, and then came yeah. together with your song yeah exactly it's i mean how many times have you heard that singing is therapeutic mm. you know and uh, and it really is and it just goes to show how therapeutic it is i mean the, there are about 20 odd um guys in this choir and uh, they just seem to be buzzing at the end of this recording session you know uh, and i work them pretty hard in the room as well you know this is a lot of um a lot of things that I've been through in life that prepared me for that moment where I was trying to get the choir together mm. and, um, and and singing different lines and different harmonies. And at the end of it, it just seemed like it was just so, so worth it. Shane Hampshire is with me on the programme tonight. Uh, and uh, the last year, a couple of months, uh, last year you were... In June time, you were going to be in New York, weren't you? Yeah. How did that go? Well, I'm hoping to do the same again this year, but but last year it was so surreal. I mean, it was Shane Hampshire live in New York, basically. Um, but the, but the strange thing is, the the day before the performance, I was giving out leaflets out in the street in <laughs> Times Square. You know, just really just um, trying to make the most of being a British singer out yeah. there. Good for you. Did you have a conversation with people saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to be appearing at the Metropolitan Room. Do you want to come and see me? Absolutely, yeah. They said, who are you? 
uh, where is that? <laughs> but um, it, for me, it's a big deal, and it's something I can build on as well. But you know what? That's the thing, isn't it? As you, you continue in your career, you've been doing it for quite a while now, but the reality is you have to keep building, keep getting this recognition. Yeah. Uh, I know you're going to be on um, the BBC in terms of uh, national radio in a couple of weeks, so people will be able to check you out there um, with lovely Claire Teal. Uh, so that, that's going to be great on, on BBC Radio 2. Here on BBC Radio Kent, we love to hear about your story because you very much, you know, you are our county and, and you've worked, you know, your socks off in this county at lots of different venues. So the new album is uh, on the way, coming. We're going to get it soon. It's available. It's, um, it's out there already. And it came out um, last month. And just on the day of release, it got to number four in the uh, iTunes Jazz album charts. So it's... it's um, That's pretty amazing, isn't it? It does sound amazing, doesn't it? Uh, you know, uh, in the top five, you've got Frank Sinatra, Gregory Porter, you know, and just to see your own name up there is pretty exciting. And that's interesting, Shane, because uh, in the past, everyone's eyes was fo- were focused firmly and ears uh, on a Sunday afternoon to the, the, the top 40, the charts yeah. as they are. The reality is for a lot of younger people uh, and um, and the rest of us, quite frankly, uh, da- iTunes, da- iTunes uh, downloads and all the rest is very much part of it now. But the music that you perform, the kind of, um, you know, the crooner stuff, as like I like to call it, uh, people love hearing this and it has never gone away. Why do you think that is and why do you think you love it so much? It's just a, a testament to the songwriting at the time. Um, people say nowadays, oh, they don't write them like they used to. and I, They're not trying, that's the thing. Um, music has changed so much. But, but back then, that was the pop music of the day. Um, you know, in the 1940s, Frank Sinatra was the pop idol. And um, the songs, the, the great singers, the great songs, when they combined, they, they were unstoppable. If people want to find out more about you, uh, where you're going to be touring next, the album, where do they need to go? Um, I've got a lovely website. It's called uh, shanehampshire.co.uk with a couple of, a few W's at the beginning. We uh, should explain uh, Hampshire as well. It's spelled slightly differently. To oh, like what a lovely opportunity, Dom. Thank you. <laughs> it's Shane Hampshire, which is S-H-A-N-E, and Hampshire is spelled oddly H-A-M-P-S-H-E-I-R. Do you know why that? It's, no, no, me. it's not my fault. I don't <laughs> do it. It's not my dad's fault either. Don't blame him. It's BBC Radio, Ken. Uh, it would be weird to not have you here and, and just sort of say, oh, let's have a nice chat. I want to hear the music. Will you perform for us? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, what are we going to do? Um, the song that I recorded with the choir last uh, last Christmas, which is a, a nice song, uh, co-wrote with Chloe Dupre. This is By Your Side. I'd like to say, when I said, uh, what shall we do? Uh, I'm not sitting here with a piano or anything. Oh! I could have given that impression, couldn't I, really? You did give that impression. Yeah, you're right. You didn't learn it. No. Shane, thank you. Thank you. I never believed In something I can't see I never thought my eyes could deceive Through all the pain and the summer rain We put the world to shame Who would have thought or believed People would talk Baby, when we showed Any bit of love they'll never hold You know the way that we always say We'll never be apart But I'll be there to be by your side Let the rain fall down on me Cause I'll be strong Showers cover me Cause I know I will I'll save you from everything Thinking of you is never quite enough And being here without you's getting tough 
If I had a choice, then you'd hear my voice. I tell you from the heart that I'll be there, I'll be by your side. Let the rain. Shane Hampshire on BBC Radio Kent. I thought my piano playing was all right, didn't you? It was all right, wasn't it? Oh, were you playing the piano? Yeah, oh. sorry about that. Oh, OK. It was very far away. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't see any of that. I was right honest. in there. There's right no in the proof. Background. There's no proof oh. of that. <laughs> Oh, there is a video coming, so there's definitely no proof. Uh, <laughs> lovely to see you. Thank you so much for having me, Dom. Can't wait.